will always have Paris. The Enterprise experiences strange time distortions as the crew helps an ailing scientist who claims to have opened a window into another dimension. Which sounds cool. Unfortunately, this episode turns out to not be that great. It starts off with Picard talking about going on shore leave. Do they do anything except go on shore leave? I'm so freaking lazy. <laughs> and then he even says, On a personal note, I have allowed myself the luxury of a head start. A great role model you are. So he's fencing with this crewman. I wouldn't be surprised if he does fencing, but are we thinking that's actually Patrick Stewart? I think it's probably not, but at the same time, yeah, I could see him doing that. The other guy looks like Brad Dorif. I don't know if you thought that. No, I did not. Okay, well, he does. Usually when I see some sleazy-ass homeless guy trying to stab me with a used needle, then I think of Brad Dorif. <laughs> <laughs> So they go through a weird time shift thing right away, and they're aware of it right away, which is good. Because it bothers me so much when obvious things are happening, and everyone seems to be an idiot about it. And they're guilty of it, too. Definitely. I feel like this is the first instance in this episode, though, of them introducing an idea involving time like that, but they don't explore it in a way that really makes a lot of sense. Because these characters are aware of what's happening, but they're still doing it again anyway. Doing the same thing again, saying the same things again. Well, do they have control over it? Well, that's a good question. Because theoretically, if they could change what they were doing as it was happening, then that would be creating divergent time streams. So they can find out where the time distortion came from. And it turns out Dr. Paul Mannheim, who's played by Rod Loomis, who also played Sigmund Freud in the first Bill and Ted movie, which I know you're a huge fan of. Huge fan. So Dr. Mannheim went off to work on nonlinear time experiments 15 years ago, and they receive a distress signal from him. And then Riker says something really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you could be talking about anything that he says, but okay. The writing in this episode is pretty weak. Everything is laid out right in front of you, and characters usually say it out loud. And this is the first point when Riker says, You act as if there's a connection between the time distortion and the distress signal. <laughs> yeah, no shit! <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't have anything to add, but yeah. And then Troy starts trying to do some counseling right there on the bridge in front of everybody when she says... When Professor Mannheim's name was mentioned, you reacted with intense emotion. Yeah, and he's just like, get the hell out of the way. I don't have time for your womanly antics. So she tells him he should probably unburden himself of some of the emotional turmoil he's going through. So he goes to the holodeck and recreates a Paris cafe where supposedly something happened. He goes in and the waiter's walking him to his table and we see Roger Corman freaking behind him playing that dumbass space accordion thing <laughs> that just made me so mad. What is that thing? It's the future. They've moved beyond aesthetics and practicality too. I love how it still sounds like an accordion though beyond aesthetics. I like that. The image we see when Picard is on the holodeck of Paris in the distance doesn't look real at all, and you got these spaceships flying around, but it's cool that they made this painting and stuck it in the episode. I also like the two women that are at the table next to him that are talking in their stupid conversation that is apparently made up by the computer. The way Picard deals with the holodeck in this episode, he's an idiot in terms of his lack of understanding of how anything works. He still acts like all these people are real people, but at the same time, he knows it's not real. It doesn't make a lot of sense, and it's handled kind of strangely. So he gets in a conversation with the girl at the cafe, and again, the writing is telling us exactly what's happening, exactly what they're thinking, exactly what happened. It's too explicit, and that's the whole episode. So it turns out the time hiccup didn't just happen on the Enterprise. It happened on a farming colony, it happened somewhere else, and I thought at that point, they're on the Enterprise. They have all the technology, they're experienced all this weird stuff all the time, so they're kind of going with it. But if you were someone on that farming colony and something like that happened, you would be losing your mind it would be terrifying yeah those are good points so they get to the planet where it all happened and there's a force field that prevents them from helping so picard is really nervous because the woman on the audio obviously he knows who it is but he doesn't want to tell anybody who it is because he doesn't like revealing his personal affairs so picard tells them down on the planet to shut down the force field without trying to find out why they have it on in the first place it could be something you know there could be some kind of danger with it he doesn't ask any questions at all about their situation he doesn't ask any questions about the guy who's sick or what's going on with that. He just beams them aboard. That's a good point. So they beam them both up. It's Dr. Mannheim and his wife Janice. And she's got some great teeth. That's the first thing I noticed. She has really straight white teeth. She's played by Michelle Phillips, who was part of the Mamas and the Papas. So I don't know. I guess it kind of makes sense that she would have good teeth in real life. 
Dr. Mannheim believes that what holds us in this dimension is the constancy of time. It raises questions that this episode is not ready to answer. Yeah. And as Mannheim gets closer to his goal of opening up these other dimensions, he's taking more risks. And that led to everyone else on the station being killed and him having these weird seizures and having this whole situation happen. So Picard's got a thing for Janice. They had a relationship in the past. You know, for being the kind of guy that Picard is, he's got a lot of relationships in his past that pop up all the time. Also, I want to point out the thing that she's wearing, this weird shirt with open sides. It's just weird, even for Star Trek. I like how visibly jealous Beverly gets when Picard's talking to Janice. So Data, Riker, and Picard are talking about what's happening and what they're going to do. And they get in the turbo lift, and then they see themselves outside the turbo lift. And it's dubbed the Mannheim effect. And their conversation really reminded me of Spaceballs when they're watching the movie Spaceballs within the movie Spaceballs. You're looking at now, sir. Everything that happens now is happening now. What happened to then? We passed then. When? Just now. We're at now now. Go back to then. When? Now. Now? Now. I can't. Why? We missed it. When? Just now. This is where we started. If we are us. Oh, we are us, sir. But they are also us. So indeed, we are both us. I really like the way Riker and Data lean over to see if anybody's inside. When Beverly has Dr. Mannheim in sick bay, and she starts kind of petting him while he's unconscious, it was weird, kind of creepy. Then Mannheim wakes up, and he says his mind is floating between two dimensions. And then Picard, in typical this episode fashion of being very obvious, he just gets down and says, The situation is not good. Dr. Mannheim revealed that he opened a window into another dimension, and if they don't seal the hole, the other dimension will rip into their reality. And that whole setup sounded very much like a Outer Limits type plot. Unfortunately, they completely fumbled this episode. We get an emotional moment between Janice and Picard, why he didn't come to meet her in Paris on the last day before he left. It's unique to see a little of Picard's backstory and his inner turmoil, but in this case, it's not particularly interesting. I think it's the most interesting part of the episode. I think the reason it's not as interesting is because everything else should be more interesting. All the time, distortion stuff should feel like it matters a lot more than it does. The questions that it raises. But because that stuff gets so poorly handled, I feel like it disrupts everything else. But I do like the interactions between Picard and Janice. I think I would have liked it better if there had been more conflict. Everyone's okay with the way things happened, and they're just talking about it without any new conflict. If they got into some kind of argument, it would have made it have more substance. That's true. I don't like how okay with it her husband is, with her going back and talking to Picard, and then even sort of going on a date on the holodeck later. Everybody's a little too happy and okay with everything. I like their performances. I feel like they do a good job feeling like they're people that were in that relationship before. At one point, Picard says, And am I that transparent? And I thought, yeah, and so is the plot of this whole episode. So Data ends up going down by himself because he can control the effects of the time distortion a little better than a human would be able to, which makes sense. And he said, I see time as a constant, whereas humans perceive time as flexible. There's no depth to any of this writing. It doesn't matter. They just put in some words, said, all right, it's good. Let's just make the episode. So he gets down there and we need some more tension. So for whatever reason, Dr. Mannheim forgot to tell them about the gigantic green lasers. The whole security setup, it's not practical. It's just kind of stupid. So Data has to add antimatter to the time distortion in order to correct it. So he picks it up and right when he gets there, a time distortion happens. And then there's three Datas. He has to figure out which one is in the correct time continuum because he has to add the antimatter at exactly the right point in time which was an interesting plot point but they're all data they should not have to converse with each other they should all have the same knowledge and know what to do exactly that really made me angry plus he also says only the right one has to put it in but then you see all three of them put it in and they don't all put it in at the same time it doesn't make any sense no matter how you look at it plus he seems so confused when he sees the others of himself but he should understand what's happening that's the reason why they sent him down by himself as you can tell the rating for this episode is going to be very high <laughs> he's asking himself questions how is another self going to have answers to a question that he doesn't already have it doesn't make any sense it's so stupid agreed so everything is all solved dr manheim and janice decide to go back and i did like picard's expression when the two of them reunited yeah and she's still got that dumb shirt on 
And then we get a dumb short leaf joke at the end. It's a reference to Casablanca. I mean, the last time I saw Casablanca was in theaters, so it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> we'll always have Paris. Overall? It's an episode that tries to get into Picard's backstory and give you a little bit of depth, but it doesn't. It kind of feels like an inconsequential aspect of his past. Nothing about the sci-fi part of it makes any sense or is even tolerable. I did like their performances from Patrick Stewart and Michelle Phillips. Nothing in this episode is really all that engaging. But it's not a super terribly put together episode. It's just kind of bland and forgettable. That ending with Data is just so stupid. What should be a big important plot to this episode is so dumb. I'm going to give it a D+. Just hearing Dr. Mannheim talk about opening holes into different dimensions and everything, that could have been so cool. But for this show, it doesn't seem like something they could have done well. It seems, again, like a Twilight Zone or Outer Limits type idea. I felt the whole episode was inconsequential. I think bland is the perfect word to describe it. The weird subplot of Beverly being jealous doesn't matter. The fact that Picard and Janice are so comfortable with each other and Dr. Mannheim's okay with the two, that doesn't matter. Data going down and stopping other dimensions from ripping into the fabric of our reality didn't seem to matter that much. I'm going to give it a D plus also. And the thing that's so frustrating is it's not a super terrible episode. It's just that it drops the ball on every single aspect of everything that's going on. And we have had episodes that cannot be saved. They're just bad. This one could have been saved. That's what makes it even more disappointing. Mm -hmm.